Rainer Bedrick is a mathematician and acrobat from Germany. He sent in this beautiful puzzle, which we're going to call Rotten Apples. Here it is. Can you figure out the rules? Well, we have apples numbered 1 through 15. There's no duplicates here. And we've tried to find a tree that we can gather the most apples. If you see that two apples are neighboring on the perimeter here, for example, four and eight, well, then you know that one of them is a multiple of another. Oh yeah, eight is a multiple of four. 12 and four. Oh yeah, 12 is a multiple of four. Six and 12. Oh, 12 is a multiple of six. So that, that's true all the way around. We were trying to find a tree that we could gather all 15 apples, but we couldn't. Three of them were rotten. There they are. We couldn't gather these three no matter how hard we tried. Let's do it from 1 through 30. This is as good as I could get. But I failed to gather them all. I gathered a lot, but I missed six rotten apples. Here they are. I missed these six. If you are an educator, this is where you leave this video, you go off, you ask your kids, name a number between 13 and 35, uh, or whatever you want, and, and uh, then go forth and try to find the most apples that you can gather from, from that tree. Okay? If you, on the other hand, are a puzzle designer, then I want you to stay on this video because I've got something to share with you if you want to be constructing your own puzzles in the future. And that is about the naming of the puzzle. So this was Reiner's initial wonderful puzzle. That's why it's, uh, this puzzle is totally his, is because of this wonderful idea that he had. So he's walking around, uh, picking up apples as he goes, and he's not making a loop like we have in, in our puzzle, but he was making a path. Uh, we might as well draw it like this. So there we go. He picked up all of the apples, one through 10, except the number seven. He called this apples. And that would be a very common uh, idea that you should call this apples. But in my experience in the math classroom, you want to be introducing puzzles with a little bit of nasty theme, tongue-in-cheek nasty theme. So you call it rotten apples instead of apples. And maybe that's just for the half of those kids that have too much testosterone. But for whatever reason, I have found this a really useful technique in the math classroom. For example, I can go around a, a pair of kids that are um, not engaged and I can just say, have you ever eaten a rotten apple? And it just gives them a moment to breathe and I walk away, but I'm expecting them to go back to work. Okay, so it just gives them a moment to breathe, get away from the math. 